Hello, Blake Crudis here with Everyday HDR and HDRinsider.com, and you might be wondering why we're looking at a red, green, and blue finger painting. Well, it's not quite a red, green, and blue finger painting washed over my image. This is how you use Topaz Remask to remove a background and add whatever background you like. And the great news is it's not just for Photoshop now. It's a standalone program, so anyone can use Topaz Remask. Let's go ahead and jump in and look at this. All right, so let's take a quick look at what Topaz Remask 5 has to offer for us. Now, if you've never used Topaz Remask before, what it's used for is it's a masking software that can really help you separate parts of your photograph. So for this one, uh, I tried to do some long exposure here, but this guy is really just dying to have a better uh, background on it for the sky area. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to Filter, and in Filter, go to Topaz Labs and go to Remask 5. Now, if you're familiar with Remask 4 or any of the Remask versions beforehand, there's not gonna be a whole lot that's different for you here in this interface. Everything will be very similar to what's going on in Remask 4. Now, if you saw, I jumped in from Photoshop. The biggest difference right now with Topaz Remask 5 is that now you don't have to have Photoshop to use Topaz Remask. It's also a standalone program, which makes it really awesome for people who don't have Photoshop or something with that kind of capability. So as you see, when you open it up, it kind of tells you how this works. Paint with blue around kind of sketchy areas that might be difficult, and then just drop in red behind it, and boom, you've got a mask. So I'm gonna go ahead and skip that tutorial there. I'm just going to show you how my kind of workflow goes here. So I'm going to go ahead and just, I have the blue selected. So basically paint with blue on areas that are going to be kind of hard for uh, any type of masking program to really understand. And that's going to be the edges. You paint over the edges and then you'll fill in certain areas with red that you want to go away and green that you want to keep. So very simple here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a brush size that, that I can actually see from outside of the scope of zooming in. Uh, so right about here is good. And I'll just make a point right here. Now, what I like to do is if I have edges like this, just press and hold shift and click on the next point. That way it saves me a lot of this whole tracing thing. Now you can trace with the mouse, but you see how steady you have to be with that. It can be very tedious. So if you just press and hold shift, it'll make straight lines based off of what you tell it to select. So it can be very good for doing architectural work like this. Even on some of these areas here that aren't quite straight lines, it'll cover everything. So basically you want your blue to cover a little bit of the area that you want to keep and a little bit of the area that you want to go away. All right, so I can kind of do this one by hand by tracing it. It's a little tricky here and then go back to pressing shift and clicking. Uh, now I've used many different programs for masking and remask is one of my favorites. It's just so simple and so easy. Just click point, click point, and you're good to go. Uh, you know, in all the Topaz webinars that I do, this is one of the main pieces of software that I like to, to uh, talk about because it's so powerful. So then you'll see here, I have these little window spaces here and all those window spaces, they need to go away too. So at this point, I will zoom in and then I'll grab the little hand here. Up here, you have your zoom button. I'll grab the hand and just move this around until I get where I want. So from here, I'll make the brush size really small. So I'll use that blue one again and just kind of trace around this edge. Now one on a brush size is a little small. If you press the right bracket key, it'll make your brush bigger. If you press the left bracket key, it'll make your brush smaller. So I'll just trace right around this window here and then keep going around this. And you'll see, now I'm gonna get the red paint bucket. I'll drop it right here. I'll drop it right here. I'll drop it right here and I'll do the same thing over here. I'm going to grab this and I'll, I'll just start up here, click a point there, press and hold shift and do these windows really quickly and then just drag this on around. All right. This is the uh, quick way to do it. I love that, that shift key. And a lot of times Topaz will use the uh, hot keys that are in Photoshop. So uh, that hot key for shift is actually one of the hot keys that you, you can use to, to draw a straight line in Photoshop. So we'll zoom around the picture. We'll grab that little hand again and zoom around this picture and look for the next window that we need to do. And it, it, say, it helps to really do this now since so you'll have to do it later. Get the best mask you can before you press compute mask. So you have to do less work later. That's kind of how I look at it. And then I'll grab that little hand again and move around here. Now, one thing that I, I also mentioned in the beginning of this is that now this is a standalone program. And that's great because there ha there isn't really that many great um, products out there for people who don't own Photoshop to create uh, composite images. Well, now you'll see in the new Topaz Remask 5, there's a little area here where you can actually create the composite right in Remask, which for us in Photoshop might not be very helpful, but for others who don't have Photoshop, it's extremely helpful.
So it looks like that's all the windows that I have there. Uh, if you accidentally click, just press, yeah, I accidentally click the fill bucket in here. I don't want to do that. Press control Z, that'll undo. Take away my uh, magnification. Looks like I have a pretty good mask here and I'll press compute mask. So once I do that, Remask is going to run through its algorithm here and it's going to create what looks like the perfect mask. You're going to see behind here all these little squares. Those are transparency squares to tell you that now there is nothing back there. But one of the things I like to do is actually click on this little mask button here to make sure that my mask is good. What you'll see here, like right here, especially, you see like these little, what I like to call like little sprites of area that are coming up that are kind of gray. Well, that's an area that Remask didn't quite get computed the way I wanted it to, so I'll just paint red right here. Now, I'm not going to touch inside this area. I'm only going to touch just on the outside, and it'll fix all that. Like this area right here where those bricks should be there, I'll use green and just click on that and just drag it around and then that'll fill in those areas. Again, if it doesn't fill them in completely, just do a couple little clicks of green. You don't have to trace it all and just go around your entire composite that way. So I'll go ahead and zoom out and I'll zoom back in, get that hand brush and move it around. So you can see here, I need to go ahead and paint a little bit of green over here to get that back. And it doesn't have to be perfect, but if you accidentally go outside, you see how we got one of those little sprites? Again, just switch over to your red tool and click on that. So we'll get that green, just kind of go along the sides here. Now, for the sake of the tutorial, I'm just going to go ahead and, and, and speed this up a little bit. I'm not going to go ahead and worry about all of these areas here too much. I'm just going to show you what's new in Topaz Remask 5 that you didn't see before. Now, down here, you have something that says background. Uh, so you can select a solid background. Let's say we want the background to be orange. Now, where this would come in handy is, uh, like I see now, this is very handy for showing me areas in my image that maybe didn't get a very good mask. So you can see here, like this blue area right there. Well, that shouldn't be blue. That should go away. So I'll just click right there. And that'll kind of help me build that. But what this is really good for is like is product photography. So this solid fill. Maybe you shoot a product and that product uh, you want on a white background, but it was shot on something blue. Or maybe it was a glass that was shot uh, on your countertop and you want to segregate it. Well, you can paint around that glass and then just fill the background with blue, green, red, gray, whatever, whatever color suits your fancy. Now let's go ahead and zoom out here. We have another thing over here called image. So if I press image, you can actually replace the background with an image somewhere else. So I have a bunch of clouds that I've selected. Over the years, I, I take cloud pictures. If I like the way the clouds look, I'll go ahead and snap a picture of just the clouds so I can drop them in later. So here, I'll take this tone mapped cloud image here and put that in the background and see what happens. So you can see we get this nice moody uh, background there. Uh, I don't really care for this one too much. So let's go back to that image there and we'll replace that with another one. So let me uh, cancel out of here. We'll go to image and we'll select a new image. I wanna try this one. So I'll open this image. And this image will probably be a little bit better because there's some nice, uh, I guess, texture happening in the clouds up there with some little pockets of of uh, what looks like almost a storm coming by. So I'll move this down so that the trees, tree line goes behind those trees there. Maybe even make this a little bit bigger so we can get more of that uh, cloud area up there with the, all the undulations in there. And we'll just move this right over here just like that. Now you have some controls down here for that background area. So you can make that background a little bit brighter, which it looks like it would need to be a little bit brighter for this image. So just m manipulate that a little bit, increase that brightness. That looks about good. You know, Maybe move that down just a little bit you can increase the contrast on this too. Now for us in Photoshop, like I said before, this might not be very helpful because we jump into Photoshop later and do it in Photoshop later. But if you're using the standalone version, you're not using Photoshop. This is excellent because you actually get some control down here. So this is a little, a little on the yellow side so I can drop the temperature a little bit and uh, make that cloud background kind of blend a little bit better with the rest of the image based on the temperature to make it a little match a little bit better. So at this point, this looks pretty good. I can go ahead and press OK. If I save as, if I save this as uh, an untitled JPEG or a TIFF or a PNG, that'll let me save my, my composite work that I've done like this. Or if I go ahead and press OK, because I'm not using standalone version, that opens right in Photoshop and gives me that transparent background. Where in Photoshop, I can put whatever sky I want in there later.
So beyond just dropping in skies, I've done quite a bit of composite work with Topaz Mask 5. Here's one of my son, my oldest son, looking like Captain America in his Captain America costume. So I wanted to give him like his time and place there. So I you know, used Topaz Remask to cut out the, the foreground figure, which is my son. And I also used Topaz Remask to cut out the helicopters and the parachuters. And then if you look at this one, very similar here. I used Topaz Remask to cut out uh, the subtle portrait of myself looking like Wolverine and then put the background in behind it. So it's not just dropping in skies. You can do a lot of things with Topaz Remask that uh, are really just powerful for masking features. So again, my name is Blake Rudis with Everyday HDR and HDRinsider.com, and I just want to thank you for watching this tutorial. If you like it, please subscribe, share it, send it to a friend, and check out Topaz Remask at the Topaz Labs website. It is a great piece of software to add to your collection, whether you're a Photoshop artist, or now, if you're not in Photoshop, you can use it outside of Photoshop too, because it is a standalone program. Thank you very much again for watching this.